welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys how I started my business, which is a question that a lot of people ask me, so I just decided to make it a video. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer that I didn't answer in this particular video, just put it underneath the comments and I'll get back to you. So I grew up in South Florida. I am a Florida native on the West Coast called Newport Ritchie. When I moved to Boca Raton from Newport Ritchie, I kind of caught myself like trying to figure out who I really was and what I wanted to do. And also my style kept on evolving and I was always kind of testing the waters with different, like I went through when Nirvana was a big thing, like the Doc Martin phase. And then I went super girly for a while. I guess now my style is pretty much like a little bit like edgy, but still kind of feminine at the same time. When I was going to school, like I said, I was trying to find myself and all this kind of thing. And I couldn't see myself really working for anyone. My father was an entrepreneur, so I just kind of grew up in that family and knowing kind of running a business. I used to work at my dad's shop uh, every summer. Like I never really went away to sleepaway camp or anything like that. My mom did the bookkeeping. So it was a family run business, which I was a big part of. And I, and I, I loved it. Like I loved kind of creating your own, your own thing. After high school, I went to college. I went to FAU still kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, which was like nothing that I could think about at the time. And then I had an opportunity to move to New York for six months and take a course in creative enterprise ownership at the Fashion Institute of Technology, which is known as FIT. It's one of the most prestigious schools in Manhattan. I think it rivals Parsons. So it's FIT and Parsons basically that were the two best schools and um, I was fortunate enough to get into FIT. I moved up there, packed out my stuff by myself, and it wasn't really a New Yorker by any stretch of the imagination, like especially me coming from a small town. So I took a six month Excel course, Creative Enterprise Ownership, and when I was there, I really flourished and I kind of found my, my vibe, I guess you could say. Like I finally felt for the first time in my life that I really fit in with the people there and that I shared the same kind of creative, creative spirit as the students didn't even the teachers i grew tremendously i networked as much as possible i really um spent time after school getting to build relationships with the teachers and the teachers were all very accomplished in their own industries that was very beneficial to me because after the six months that i spent in new york i came back home and i would follow up with the teachers and professors and i would recommend this to all of you going to school right now is to maintain the connections that you make especially when you're going into a certain industry so when i was starting my business um, I, I reached out to them and they replied like i reached out to one of the professors who was teaching us legals uh, a fashion merchandiser, all these different kind of elements that you need to build a business off of. I reached out to them to kind of get their help and guidance and support even with like accounting or learning markup or mark when to mark things down and a retail assortment. So it was all very imperative and very, very, very helpful to me. Back to me moving back to Florida after my hiatus in New York City, which was awesome by the way, and I miss it every day very much. Um, I came back home and I took about six months off really reading everything that I could read. I googled everything I could google. I networked more. I got involved in a lot of different charity events. I really kind of wedged myself in with people that I knew were complementary to the business that I wanted to do. That was also a great thing that I did um, to really help me long term. And also, you guys, I opened in 2009, and I'm not sure if many of you remember or not, but 2009 was the midst of the recession. I was able to open at a time where a lot of other businesses were going out of business. I think in hindsight, that kind of helps me because it was during that time that my brand, Lilac and Lilies, was developed. So I really took that opportunity and I ran with it. My whole life, I worked, like as I told you guys before, I worked at my father's store every summer, so I saved money and I had enough money to open up my first store, which is not the location that we're in now. It was a smaller store over in a place called Lauderdale by the Sea. I trademarked my name and I got an LLC and all these other kind of things that you really need, like, the businessy part of the business, I did. Oh, here's here's a good story. My first trade show, I flew to New York, um, not knowing anything, and I went to not just uh, 
a trade show, but I went to a private showroom. They called it an atelier. And it was kind of a mid to higher price uh, dress designer, beautiful dresses, like all the Real Housewives browses dresses and just really, really nice quality. And I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I felt so stupid in that meeting. And I remember like running out, not running, but like as soon as I left that showroom, I ran then to the first bathroom. And I started like bawling crying because I felt like I was in New York City, like I had no business being there, and what am I doing, I don't know anything. Yeah, I, I just cried my eyes out, and then I think that the next day, I just gave myself a good pep talk, and I went back out there and did it again. So yeah, first trade show was a disaster. Uh, in 2009, when I opened, it was not easy at all. I thought that I could close at any second of every day. Like there were days where we didn't have any customers at all, but then, things kind of slowly started turning around. And mind you, like I did everything and anything I could to brand myself or to bring in business. Like I did pop-up boutiques everywhere. I remember packing up my, I had a uh, SUV at the time. So I packed up my SUV and I would, I did this by myself because I didn't have any employees then. I packed up my car, unloaded my car, set up a pop-up shop, sold all night, maybe selling one or two things packing up my car again, coming back to the store, unloading everything. And I did that like twice a week for like a good year, I think. And I remember some nights just driving home after doing that, just like deliriously tired on like the thought of me falling asleep at the steering wheel at any point in time. I've made a ton of mistakes in my career and I still make them till this day, every day. I think that the silver lining in making mistakes is you learn like super quick, like, if it costs your business money through the mistakes that you've made, you'll make that mistake once, maybe twice, and never again. So I definitely think that you learn from your mistakes. A huge mistake that I made was, again, in 2009, it was a recession. I was buying higher priced items that were at a certain price point that I shouldn't have been buying at. So I had a terrible sell through and a lot of those items went on the discount rack. People say knowing your customer and that always bothered me because I was like, how could you know your customer when you're first starting out? What I suggest is know your demographic, like the area that you open, like know your surroundings and buy for those people. I learned through trial and error that what price point works for us and that's definitely items that are under $100 move really, really fast. Yeah, we carry some higher priced items, some like more specialty pieces, but I would say 90% of our items retail for a hundred and less. So I always tell people that we are affordable, we are on trend, and we have a really great quality product. So some of the truths behind owning a business, and you guys, this can change from entrepreneur to entrepreneur, but this is the truth for me, is that I give my business my everything every single day so it is i don't have kids and this is like my baby first thing when i wake up in the morning i check our accounts to make sure everything is running smoothly i reply to vendors i call the store first thing at 9 a.m to check in and see you know did this get authorized? Where do we stand with this? What's going on with this? So it is It is like your child and it never leaves you. Even when you leave work, you're still getting emails and phone calls and um, it, it's pretty much like there's, there's a saying that you hustle from the time you open your eyes to the time you close your eyes and that is absolutely true. Like I, even if I go out of town, like I'm still but that's also the blessing in it is that I can, if I'm on a trip, I can bring my laptop and still work and conduct a business from, I don't know, Mexico drinking margaritas. There are some things that I wish that weren't part of the business, but then there are some things that are awesome. So it's just kind of a give and a take. So some tips that I'll give for all of you who are just starting out or even starting to think about opening a business is Plan to really roll up your sleeves for, I mean, I still do it, I'm 10 years in, but you it's really gonna be an all day and an all night thing. It is going to be your life for a while um, because it is your baby. So really plan on giving it 100% of your time. And really, I, I think that if you aren't as dedicated to it when you're opening it, it's not gonna go forward. So when you're opening, it's imperative to really 
be there with it every step of the way. And also, you know, a lot of times people see on Instagram what I post, right? And it's very, uh, it seems very fun and flashy and glamorous and there are some sides of it that are definitely that way but let me tell you the majority of it is you have sleepless nights there there is a lot of anxiety involved like if an employee can't come in like you're going to work whether you have plans or not and entails a lot and another piece of advice that I would give you guys is that you are going to come across some very isolated and deep dark times when you feel very alone and you're like battling Goliath. And I would say to you that no, you're not alone. And you really, those are the times where you have to really kind of dig your heels in the ground and really keep on pushing through because those are the times when you want to give up that are gonna make or break you, so keep on going. Another thing that I always say is people kind of, I guess by default, acknowledge me for the success of the business and I always say it's not just me like I'm a very small part of it we our team it's a collaborative effort and it really is to kind of push the business forward finding a good team is imperative and me finding team members has really shifted throughout the years like right now when I hire someone having retail experience is a great thing but at the end of the day, I really don't care. If you're passionate and if you have that hunger inside you to work and want to do well for yourself, then like we speak the same language and I will hire you and I will train you retail. So I think just having that desire to do well in life and, and going above and beyond is, is everything. Some great things about owning your business is the schedule is awesome like after this i'm going to go get a facial <laughs> and then i'm going away for the weekend so uh the job flexibility is amazing i've met some really really cool people like a few years ago gosh i met uh zach posen i've met diane von Furstenberg. i did a commercial for united airlines those are the things that like i want to pinch myself because it's just kind of things that i always dreamt about when i was younger that kind of come true um, so those are really the great things about uh, what I do and I'm sure that will be lots more in the future. And I also find that when you own your own business, you kind of, at least for me, that I surround myself with other business minded people and we go to lunches or dinners and we just talk and like, you know, what did this, how did this work for you? Or, oh my gosh, like I messed up so bad and that sucked. Like never do that again. It's like, oh God, I won't do that again. You surround yourself with really cool people. And I think that kind of that energy um, feeds off of each other and it just makes you want to motivate you more. So guys, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. I will share with you everything that I've learned throughout the years, but let me know your questions and I'll answer them in the next video or two that I do. Don't forget that every Monday and now also every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I'll be putting out new YouTube videos. If you want me to speak about anything in particular, just put it underneath the comments. Hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I did and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.